Okay, here's our vice stop model that was kindly donated by Michael Connor Woodwork to use for uh, my YouTube video. And this will be the design we'll be actually using and CNC machining uh, throughout this little three part series. Uh, so you can have a, a good look at it here, guys. It's a, it's a nice little bit of kit. It's a great little uh, idea that Michael came up with. We're not going to cover any CAD here. We're going to go jump straight into the cam section. So we're going to go click up here and we're going to come down to cam. And you can see here that I've had, for the base guys, I've had three operations. So it's going to be my top operations, my bottom operations, and it's going to be my end operations. Now we need to turn off these arms here and these other components so you can have a better look at it. So I'm just going to go up through here and turn off these light bulbs which will get rid of the parts. And all we're left with is the base plate. And you can see that there now. Okay, so I'll come back into my cam. Alrighty, so guys, first thing is uh, before you start CNC machining your courses, you, you want to build a tool library that will suit your machine and suit the tools you're, you're using. So up here in Manage, I'm going to manage my tool library. I'm going to show you guys. So my tool library is actually saved right over here. If I come over here to the side now, back over here, and come down the bottom, this is going to be in my cloud library. It's called Assets. Now, sometimes you need to turn this on back in your preferences, okay, to get that to work. So you'll go through here and sort that out. I know Lars did a video on this, so I won't cover it here. So if I go into my assets, you can see I've got um, cam posts and cam tools. And I'll get my different libraries in here. I've got the Haas libraries for school, uh, my Skyfire and my old TM20. Alrighty, so once you start building your, your library, guys, uh, it will come up here. So I've got cloud turned on, and here's my Skyfire library. I'm going to bring up one tool to show you what I'm going to what I've done here, guys. So you will need to set your tools up similar to this fashion. I'll bring up this 12 mil end mil. Okay, right click and go edit tool. It's very uh, very intuitive. You just start from the left hand side and work your way across. Okay. So fill in, fill in the fields, the necessary fields, you know, where you're getting your end mills from, what's the product ID number. Uh, then you've got to type in some geometry. So you actually have to physically put a tool in one of your collet holders or whatever you're using and actually uh, key in all the necessary information. So how much tool length you got hanging out. Now guys, this is imperative because this will give you feedback when you're doing simulation. So if you stuff up these measurements here, well, it will give you an incorrect simulation model. I also tell it what um, like collet holder I'm using. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we go into feeds and speeds. Now I worry about two things here. Other people might worry about other things. I worry about the RPM capabilities of my machine. So my machine's got an 8,000 RPM spindle. However, it tends to hunt at 8,000. So I, I like to machine around 7,000. Then I type in the feed per tooth. Now to get your feed per tooth, guys, Go to your tool vendor. Now, I, I have been using ISCAR at school. Um, at home, I use carbonemmills.com, but they're pretty much very similar in geometry and size. Now, your vendor will give you a feed per tooth minimum and a feed per tooth maximum. This is this FZ figure shown here, guys, all right? So here's my feed per tooth, my RPM, and that will calculate your feeds and speeds. So if I change this figure here, if I dial that back down to three, you watch those figures change. So three, you can see it change there, guys, all right? I'll leave this at 0.4. Uh, I'll put it back later. And there you have it, guys. So set up your tool library. And now the next step you need to do is you'll need to actually set up your work, uh, your work offset, okay? Where you're going to have your G54 or your G55, guys. So here on my model, I've set this up on the back left-hand corner. Now, if you wanted to set up a new work offset, you would simply click um, Setup over here, and up it would come, and you can just either pick a, a box point, or you can divine it yourself. Um, if you want a machine from the bottom down, so you just move it around like so. It's very easy to do. I'm going to cancel that. So that's what I've done here with this uh, first setup here, guys. All right? So... The other thing here is once you set up your work offset, make sure you give it accurate um, information such as stock width and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I set this up, when I had my, my stock cut, 
I set it up so it actually mirrored the physical size well, so it was spot on 100%. Um, I'll regenerate all these toolpaths. Sorry, up here, generate toolpath. And away we go. So guys, I started to machine this from the top, just a uh, face. In my face, I like to do pass extension. So I come over to this third tab and I give it 25 mil pass extension. But you can see guys, I start from the left hand side, pick the tool, I pick my shell mill, go to the next tab. Well, it's facing's a good thing. You don't have to select anything. It selects it for you. Um, the only thing you might want to do in facing is if you got too much to machine off, you might want to have a crack at doing multiple depths. Now, how much does it take off in one pass, guys, you might ask? Well, it will take off every a bit of material that you specify here, okay, in the stock top offset. If I change that to point 0.1, that face mill would have machined off point 0.1. If I change it to 5 mil, it will come down in one hit and take off 5 mil. And that's why you might want to change it to uh, multiple depths. All right. Okay, and my second operation here, guys, I use an outside uh, adaptive clearing. Now, you can see I took two bytes of this. I'm using a 10 mil, uh, end, 10 mil end mil. And I just thought, just for the hell of it, I'll show you. Once again, start on the left, work your way through it, guys. The stock contours, this is an easy model, guys. There's no open contours, so I just click the bottom and uh, away we go. And uh, not a problem at all. Come across here. Across your tabs, you can see how I've got multiple depths. I've told it to step down at 12 mil. Okay, so we'll take, drop down to the first 12 mil, machine that, drop down to the second mil. Uh, now over here, guys, where I've got optimum load, at 10 mil, default would be four, because it'd be 40%, okay? I'd like to dial that back a little bit. Alrighty, my next move, guys, was an outside contour. So once again, uh, when I picked 2D contour, uh, it would have came up like so. I would have told it what tool I was using. So once again, I would have gone into my tool library and picked that 10 mil end mil. I then come across, I click the bottom perimeter. Once again, it's, an, it's a closed contour, so that was easy, just click it so. Um, now, this is interesting. See down the bottom here where I've got bottom height, from selected contour going down 0.05, and I'll show you why I did that. Michael's model's got this chamfer on it, so when I picked that bottom contour, it didn't get all the way to the bottom, all right? So I told the cutter, hey, from that contour I selected, can you drop down another half a mil, all right? And over here, I've left it in uh, climb milling, and you see I've checked repeat finishing pass, all right? Back up here to ISO. For my cap head bolt, guys, now you could have done this in a pocket. Uh, I didn't. I came up here and picked 2D bore, okay? Well, right click on the 2D bore. Um, I've, once again, I had my cutter selected, which was a 6mm end mill. Came across, I picked the face of the bore, and I made sure that it said this, where's, where's my machining boundary? Now, because I've already decked the top of that, I go start from the whole top, and finish at the whole bottom, okay? And that's why it's picked up just that hole and it's gone down to that face there. I've left everything else here and I made sure, usually guys in default mode, this will be checked. Now, negative makes a hole bigger, positive makes a hole smaller, okay? I had this here turned off, all right? And everything else was uh, standard and set up. So moving along, I've got drill, so spot drill, so I spot drilled the hole. Then I've come over here and picked this hole and I've done a chip breaking cycle. I'll bring that up to show you. So I've picked the drill bit, come to the next tab. I've selected the point. Uh, I think I've had a face turned on there, guys, sorry. So what I did, I selected the bottom face, I think it was, to pick that up now by memory. I'm just Yeah, you can see here that I've Pick that face because Michael had a um, he had a thread on there, not a cosmetic appearance. You see, it can actually model it, model the thread. I think that's why I did that now. Uh, coming across, guys, and you can see here where is it? 
um, from hole from to stock bottom. Okay, bottom height. I've told it drill all the way through to the stock bottom. All right, and I didn't have drill tip through bottom checked because I knew that with my stock set up that I defined back up here, I knew it would go all the way through to the bottom and just probably put a point on there. And over here, guys, I made sure I had chip breaking partial retract and I wanted uh, at five mil accumulated pec depth, I wanted a retract move, all right? Click OK. Uh, last but not least, guys, is, is the is to drill out. So, of course, I've got a five mil drill bit in. I drilled that out. I came back up and I drilled through here and I made sure that I dropped into this bore. So I gave it a really good cleanup. Now, the reason I did that is because that bore won't be here yet. OK, so it's actually going to be a blind hole. Now, when I'm tapping, I wanted to make sure that I was deep enough that I got all the threads through and my tap didn't snap off by bottoming out in that hole. Uh, last but not least, guys, now with tapping, I'll just bring this up quickly. I think it's important that you see it. I always ensure that I come over here. If you pick a tap, a uh, Fusion's intuitive, it will actually um, pick the, uh, you know, it will make sure it will change that to tapping straight away. But I always come through and actually select right tapping. Don't put a dwell period in your tap cycle, guys. Dwelling is for drilling, okay? And of course, they lean on the drilling side of things for tapping, they leave that in there. I personally think it shouldn't be in there. So you don't, <coughs> you want no dwelling at the bottom of your hole. Otherwise you'll snap your tap. Um, I tapped here today at 300 RPM. Uh, last but not least is the chamfer. And I'll show you this, because this is interesting, isn't it? When I was new to Fusion and uh, you know this sort of H in HSM works for a matter of fact, I didn't know how the guys were chamfering. And uh, it was actually Luke from Crud CNC showed me. And once I learned that, it was really, really easy. So I just use a dodgy ass spot drill, guys. So tool two, uh, it's a Sutton Tools. It's a TI encoded one. It's a great little thing. And uh, to do this, guys, second tab, you can see which geometry I selected. I didn't select the top line. I selected the bottom line. And I left the third height pretty much standard, the third um, tab. And on passes down here, I made sure I had chamfer selected and I gave it these two default settings that I've set in here as default. 0.2 of a mil on the width and 0.5 on the tip offset. And if you just hover over it for a while, guys, Fusion will prompt you and bring up this little dialog box. Um, and there we have it, guys. It's that simple, all right? All right, now that we've finished all the uh, camming operations, guys, we need to post-process generate some code and then take it over to the machine and run the part. Uh, to do this, you'll, you'll see that I'll have to come back up here to where I first uh, started and click that little button there to activate that uh, chain of tool pass there. Alrighty, now before we post it, we need to simulate it to make sure that everything's gonna be correct. Correct, I'm gonna turn my stock on here. Now, uh, press play and you'll see it will face, so it will, uh, drop down, you can see it drop down every each time it does the new uh, the new tool path. We'll skip that one now, we'll go to the full outside contour. Okay, you can see that I've repeated the finishing pass once. Go to the next one and that's the bore for the cap head bolt. That was the spot drill. This is our pec drilling cycle. Change to a tap now and all the chamfer and contour and cleanup. Alrighty, so now that we've noticed there, we've got no errors, we've got no crash uh, detection picked up, we can close our simulation. Okay, so now that our simulation is fine and we've got no uh, problems with it, and no crash detection or anything like that, we're gonna post this code out. So we can either right click on the operation here, post process, or select it from here as well. Make sure you've got your right post processor for your machine and in here give it a program number i'm just going to call this one zero one a oh, program comment vice stop block i'll call it now when i post this now it will uh where do you want to post it so i'll say okay go to the cnc uh my usb stick here we'll just put it here test and there we are guys we can go through that now and check it um you can see there it's it's called G54 on each line on each toolpath, which is great. That's 
that's the work I've said I wanted. Alrighty, so now it's on the on the USB stick, and I can prove that to you guys by coming over here. If we just come onto that now, and we'll go CNC, and there it is, there test, and we can open that. We'll open in the notebook as well. Okay, let's take this job to the machine now, and let's run it. Okay, I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.